Okay, welcome back to part three. So I have Rhino Cam open, and what I'm going to do is make sure that my cutting tools are visible. So I'm going to click right here on Tools, Machining Objects, and I'll delete these tools and pretend that this is a brand new computer starting up. So I'm going to go to Load Tool Library, and I have to point to where the tool library is. So it's going to be under Students HS, the Student Share folder. Rosen, Pickup, Cam, and it's right at the bottom here, Kings Park High School Tool Library. Okay, and you'll see all our cutting tools, V carvers and V cutters and spiral bits that are available to us. I'm just going to X this out so I can have more workspace. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, two operations, one for the hammer V carving and one for the text V carving. So what I'm going to do first is uh, actually select my stock first. So here's my here's my I'm going to double click on this stock, and it's going to automatically create a, a box stock for me. The only problem is that this it, it's not in the right spot. So first thing is we want to tell RhinoCam that the corner coordinates for the stock is going to be zero zero zero, and those coordinates are going to be located on the top south west corner of the stock. Okay, it does kind of figure out the length, length going this way, width going this way, 11 by 11, but the height it doesn't know. We're going to set that at 3 quarter inches for 3 quarter inch plywood. So I'm going to hit OK. I can double check that by looking in the perspective. So double click on top, double click on perspective, and you can see here that the stock is located on the origin with the origin on the top southwest corner. So that's good. Okay, I'm going to go back to top view, double click on perspective, double click on top, and I'll now, um, I'm going to hide my stock layer, and I'm going to select the hammers. And now, with them highlighted, I'm going to go to machining operations, two axis, and then V carving. Okay, so this first tab right here, control geometry, this represents the curves that are selected, so this closed curve. If I had many, when you see the text, you'll see there'll be many others. So we don't change anything there. Tool. All right, the cutting tool, this is a fairly wide um, mill. Okay, it's about one inch wide. I would use our 120 degree V cutter. Okay, so just click on it. If you click on it twice, you're going to see the, the, the tool's properties. Just hit cancel. Okay. And then we're going to go to feed and speeds. So the spindle speed is the, the speed that the bit spins at. We set this manually on the machine. You don't have to change this here. We're going to be running probably at 19,000 RPMs, but this doesn't, we can't control this through RhinoCam. All right, so plunge, approach, and engage. So here's the bit, plunging, approaching, and engaging the wood. We're going to go slow, 12 inches per minute. I'm going to click on tab to go to the next section, and then tab the next section. So 12, 12, 12. And then once we go to cut, retract, and depart the wood, we're going to go fast. So we're going to go at 30 inches per minute, 30 inches per minute, 30 inches per minute. Again, just hit tab and you can go right through the settings. Okay, transfer, we're going to use rapid, which is essentially 30 inches per minute. I'm going to click on the next tab. This is the clearance plane. So when the bit is moving from one area to another, we need to define how high above the workpiece is it, above the stock is it going to go. So I like to say that this height is going to be the stock max Z, which is the stock's max height, plus an eighth of an inch, 0.125. If you make it too tall, it's going to be wasteful. It's going to be going up and down and up and down for no reason. So we want to keep it low, but where it's not going to scr scratch the, the stock. Okay. The cut transfer, when it goes from one cut to another, we're going to define that by the clearance plane, which we just defined over here. Okay, and the last tab that we set is the cut parameters tab. This is the most important. Um, here it says that the tolerance is going to be a thousandth of an inch. So if this is the curve of the hammerhead right over here, what it's doing is it's, it's going out a thousandth of an inch and making a tangential point here and another thousandth of an inch 
to another tangential point. So it's not really doing a real curve. It's actually doing little polygons, but we can't we can't tell. It's a thousandth of an inch. So we leave this alone. Okay, we uh, we leave this alone. It's always going to be at top, and then um, total cut depth. This is important. The wood is three quarter inches thick. So we want to say that we're going to mill a maximum of a half inch thick. So we leave a quarter inch of untouched material on the bottom so your sign doesn't break in half. Okay, roughing depth. We can't do this in one pass, so we're going to do it in two passes. And we'll do it at a quarter inch roughing depth. And then when I click right here, it'll automatically fill in a quarter inch for the finished depth. So roughing pass right here, we mill out anything a quarter inch down. And if we have to go deeper, we can go down up to another quarter of an inch for the finished depth to get a total of a half inch depth of cut. Okay. If we were doing metal, you could you could divide those up even more over here so that we can have nice polishing operations, but we're just doing a wooden sign. I'm going to click on generate right now. If you made a mistake, you can just hit save and then go back to it later, but I'm just going to click on generate and a little window pops up here and it it compiles or generates the toolpath. And we can go to simulate and then click on simulate and play and you can watch the simulation. I recommend watching it in the perspective. Okay, so I click on setup one to see the blank stock, simulate play, and then there's the carving. I'm gonna hold down shift and right click to pan and then right click and hold that and move to rotate and inspect the V carving, okay? So this is gonna look good. We have a couple islands here, but they got milled. So when they get painted, we won't see them, but I think it looks really good, nothing weird, okay? Um, I'm going to go back to program and then back to my top view. And before I do anything, I'm going to, um, well, I'm going to actually copy this operation. Okay. So I don't have to do it all over again. So if I just click on it, right click, copy, click underneath it, right click, paste, I've just copied the operation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the, uh, I'm going to double click on it and the control geometry here, I'm going to remove everything. So I'm going to go to remove all and then I'm going to say select curve or edge regions. And it says, all right, what curves do you want to mill on this operation? I want to do all of these right here and I'm going to hit enter. Now you can see all the different closed curves that I have. Okay. So I'm just going to hit save and before I get confused because they both have the same names. I'm going to rename this one Hammer 120V. Okay, so it's milling the hammers with 120 degree V cutter. And then this one, I'm going to go back in. Okay, so I'm going to double click on it. The tool, this is rather thin. Okay, I'm going to do a 90 degree V cutter. Okay, feeds and speeds 12, 12, 12, 30, 30, 30. Clearance plane is going to be 0.125. Cut parameters 0.5. Roughing depth, 0.25, finish depth, 0.25, and then I'll generate. Okay, so now let me simulate this. Simulate play. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll double check it in the perspective. And yeah, it looks actually really nice. Okay, I'll zoom in. I think I think that'll be pretty good. Okay, if any, any text is thinner than an eighth of an inch, a lot of the times, um, you may want to change this bit to say the 60 degree V cutter. So I'll just show you how to do that. I'll go to 60 degree, generate, it updates the tool path, simulate, play. And you can see it actually is now cutting in a little bit deeper. Okay. I actually think that'll be better. I could fill this in with paint a little bit better than the 90 degree V cutter. So I'm going to rename this one as a uh, woodshop text 60 V. Okay. All right. So let's get an idea of how long this is going to take us to mill. So I'm going to click on setup one, right click on it and go to information. Okay. You got to do setup one so you can get all the machining operations in this. So here it shows me my, my two V carvings or machining operations. They're both clean, the cutting tools, the cut speed, um, the number of go to's and the total milling time. So eight minutes sounds pretty good. Okay, um, I'm going to save this. Okay, here's the con confirmation file successfully written into my folder. And now the last thing we have to do is post.
okay, for, for in Rhino Camp. So I'm going to double click on my post processor here. Now this computer remembers my settings, but you will have to change these. So you're going to probably see postability systems. Um, what I'm, what you have to do is point Rhino Camp to the folder where the file is located. So right here it says folder where post processor files are located. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to pretend it's going to look like yours. So you're going to do this PC, student share, Rosen, pickup, cam, and then just hit OK. All right. And then it'll show it up and shop saver KPHS. Yours is going to default to an NC file. Our machine prefers to use tap files. So you're telling it when you post this, meaning basically when you create the file for our machine, create it as a tap file. So I'm just going to hit OK. All right, everything is set. So I'm going to post these two operations. So I'm going to click on Hammer 120V so it's blue, and I can see that it's selected. I'm going to right click on it and go to Post. So it says it's going to post and save the file in my 2020 HammerSign folder. And it's going to be called hammer sign underscore hammer 120 v the post processor is a tap file and this is my uh, my current post processor so that looks good i'm gonna hit post there it is back in the 80s if you were an nc operator you would have to type this before they had nice computers and software okay, i'm just x out i'll do this one so right click on it post and here it tells me again, hammer sign, Woodshop Tech 60V, and I will post. And X out. Okay. So now the last thing you should do is a spec sheet. Okay. Um, what I want you to do is go to Student Share, Rosen, Pickup, Cam. CNC project specification sheet. Okay, take this, put your name, a okay. description of the project. Okay, this will be um, hammer sign for woodshop. Total milling time. I forgot the total milling time, so I'm going to go back to Rhino, click on setup one, right click information. 7.56 minutes. Okay, so 7.56 minutes. Cutting tools used is I have two 120V and 60V. Okay, box stock dimensions. Okay, if you could double click on box stock 11 by 11 by 0.75. Okay, so 11 by 11 by 0.75 okay any special considerations i should know about this project uh, there is a tool change okay that's kind of important and then take a a, a print screen or a snip of the uh of the simulated display so we're going to go right here i'm going to do uh setup one simulate play okay and once it's done down here in the search bar i'm going to type in snip Take the snipping tool and do a new snip. I'm just going to take this right there, edit, copy, go back into my Word document, edit, paste, make sure it fits on one page, and then save this file. Save as. Okay. I will put this into um, my uh, OneDrive, well, this PC. And I'll put it into my folder. I'm not going to do it right now because it's my OneDrive isn't synced yet. But I would save this and print it out so that I can take it into the shop and know exactly what what I need cut and what the sign is going to look like. So if you say, "Hey, can I mill a sign right before lunch?" I'll say, "How long is it?" You've got your spec sheet. You say it's going to be just under eight minutes. So, all right, that's great. Let's do it because we have 15 minutes left. Let's say. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, happy milling. I hope this helps. I will see you later.